A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Is there a bracha one makes when taking off one's tefillin? This question is discussed in, uh, in both Talmudim, the Talmud Bavli and the Talmud Yerushalmi. And I will quote uh, from the Talmud Yerushalmi for a moment. This appears in Masechet uh, Berachot of the Yerushalmi, Perak Bet Halacha Gimel, Chapter 2, Halacha 3. It says there as follows, referring to Tefillin, Kaysal hum varech alehem, what bracha does one say on Tefillin? Rabbi Zarekan Bashem Rabbi Yaakov Bar Idi says, Keshehu Nothen Shariyad, Mao Omer, Baruch Ata Hashem, etc. Al Miswat Tefillin. That when one puts on the Tefillah Shariyad, one says the bracha Sheki Dishan Al Miswat etc. Al Miswat Tefillin. Ukeshehu Nothen Narosh, and when one puts on the Tefillah Sharosh, Mao Omer, Sheki Dishan Al Miswat Tawasiwanu, Al Hanahat Tefillin. That is the Nusach of the Talmud Yerushalmi. And then it goes on to say, Ukhashahu Holasan, Mao Amir, Baruch Ata Hashem, etc. Shakidashanu Miswatha Wasiwanu Lishmor Hukau, which means literally to uh, keep and perform his statutes, Hashem's statutes and laws. And Yerushalmi goes on to say, Wa Athya Kamandu Amar, Bahukath Tefilin Hakathuv Madabir. Baram command Amar b'Hukat Hapesa Hakadu Madaber La Bada. That's what it says in, in Yerushalmi. I will explain briefly what is being said here. We have a pasuk in Sefer Shemot, Perik uh, Yud Gimel, which uh, states as follows. And I quote: "V'Shamarta Et Hukah Hazot LeMuadza MiYamim Yamima." You shall keep this statute at its proper time, MiYamim Yamima. Now. How to translate this pasuk depends, of course, on uh, what the pasuk is referring to. The, the parasha that precedes that pasuk uh, speaks of two miswoth, essentially. One is the korban pesah, and one is the miswa of tefillin. And therefore, this final pasuk uh, is a little bit unclear. Does it refer to the korban pesah? And therefore, the pasuk is saying, you shall keep the statute. Uh, that we referred to in this parasha of Korban Pesach, B'mu'adha, in its proper uh, time, every year, Miyamim Yamima, once a year. On the other hand, if we understand that this pasuk is referring to the, um, the Miswa of Tefillin, which is mentioned immediately preceding this pasuk, at the end of the parasha, then the, the pasuk means, and you shall keep, you shall perform, this miswa, this huka, this statute of Hashem, referring to tefillin, le mu'adha, in its proper time, miyamim yamima, which refers to the fact that the miswa of tefillin is to be performed during the day, but not during the night. And therefore, the uh, meaning of this pasuk depends on uh, how we understand the context. Is it referring to the first miswa of the parasha, korban pesach, or the second miswa of the parasha, the miswa of tefillin? Therefore, the Yerushalmi states that according to those who understand the pasuk to be referring to tefillin, there is a, a miswa to be said when one removes the tefillin at the end of the day. We're assuming, of course, uh, here that a person wears the tefillin all day or much of the day, and therefore, at the end of the day, when the day is uh, end, when the day ends at uh, sunset, then a person removes the tefillin and says the baracha lishmor hukau. Just as the bracha, the, the pasuk said rather, azot, you shall keep this statute, the, therefore the nusach of the bracha is lishmor hukau, you shall to keep uh, the stat, this, this statute, Hashem's statutes. So according to those who understand the pasuk to be referring to tefillin, this bracha has, has a place. According to those who understand the pasuk to be referring to the korban pesah, says the Yerushalmi, then, according to that view, there is no room to make, uh, to make this bracha. We know from this uh, statement in the Tabu Yerushami, that in, amongst other sources, 
that in Eretz Yisrael they did in fact uh, recite this bracha when they removed their tefillin at the end of the day. We also know from a number of places in the Talmud Bavli that uh, this bracha was said by the Bnei Na'rava, the Jews of Eretz Yisrael, which is to the west of Bavel. It refers to the bracha that the Bnei Na'rava make when removing their tefillin. Uh, the clear implication being that in Bavel uh, this was not the usual practice. So we have uh, the, the following reality it becomes apparent from the Talmudim, that in Eretz Yisrael this bracha was made when removing tefillin at the end of the day and in Bavel this bracha was not normally said. There is a further explanation that was offered by uh, Hagaon Rabbi Lewi Ginsburg Zal uh, ref with reference to this bracha. Why, why do we find specifically with reference to this miswa of tefillin that a bracha was said when uh, finished being finished with a miswa or having ending the kiyum of a miswa why do we find this bracha specifically with with reference to this miswa of tefillin and he explains that this uh, bracha really in essence does not have uh, anything to do with the question of whether the pasuk that we mentioned before refers to the korban pesach or to tefillin but rather the miswa was uh, instituted by the hachamim in order to emphasize and make clear the, f the fact that the wearing of tefillin is a, is a miswa, and a very great miswa, in that it reminds us of Hashem and connects us to Hashem and His Torah at all times, or many hours of the day, uh, many of our most of our waking hours, that is the intention of the miswa, that is how it is supposed to be performed. And on the other hand, it is not to be considered like some kind of a charm or an amulet or something of that sort which people also wore on their bodies, things which are attached to them by leather straps also on their head, on the arm, etc., which in some ways looked similar to tefillin sometimes, as we see in the Gemara and Eruvin, which discusses uh, finding something on the ground uh, and not being clear whether it is a tefillin or, or kameot, or some kind of amulet. In other words, there was a similarity, an external similarity between these items. And in order to make it clear that this is a very great miswa, whereas an amulet is not a miswa at all, uh, and that this is not a charm, but a, a very important and, and uh, very meaningful miswa, for that reason, the bracha was instituted to educate people that this is something that they should do and something that they must do and something which is uh, of great significance because it is one of the essential and most fundamental miswoth say the positive miswoth of the Torah. That is with regards to the background uh, to this bracha of Rishmur Hokel. Is this bracha optional or obligatory or is it perhaps forbidden to say this bracha? That's a very interesting question because uh, many people nowadays would uh, probably say that uh, it is forbidden to say this bracha because it is not the usual practice. And that is true, it is not the usual practice. Most Jews do not make this bracha. In fact, most Jews have never heard of this bracha. Uh, and it was certainly not the custom in Bavel, as we have mentioned. And therefore, many people assume that if something is not done by most Jews who do perform uh, miswoth, then this is something that one must not do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, one could respond to that argument and say, well, uh, it is true that in Bavel they did not make this bracha, but in Eretz Yisrael they did, so why can I not uh, follow the minhag and the practice of Eretz Yisrael? And this is precisely what we find in a statement made by Rav Haigaon, quoted by the Ramban in his Hidushim, uh, to Masechet Nidav, the Talmud Bavli, Daf Nun Aleph Amud Bet, and I will read uh, very briefly from the words of Rav uh, Haigaon. This is on page Kof Sadi Tet, Hidushar Ramban, Masechanida Daf, Nun Aleph Hamud Bet. The relevant lines are here. And I would ask that the uh, camera focuses in on and zooms in on these words. 
because these words of Rav Haigaon are very significant. They tell us something of great importance. He writes as follows. The Ramban is writing. He says, We find written by Rav Haigaon as follows. Shekatav bahad na'rava. This is not the practice in the yeshivot here in Bavel. In other words, this is not the halacha, the practice that we follow normally. Umihu, however, says Rav Haigon, who is uh, the most Bavli, the most Babylonian of, of Gone Bavel. He says, If a person wishes to act according to the practice of Bnei Ma'arava, the Jews of Eretz Yisrael, Shapir Dame, it is perfectly all right to do so. These are the words of Rav Haigon. And what uh, I think we must understand and conclude from this statement is that the, the approach that some people have, that one may not uh, differ in practice uh, from what most Jews in one's locality or in Jews in the world altogether all, all uh, are doing, one must be like everybody else and that there should be uh, a total uniformity of halachic practice and, uh, and Torah thought in general, this notion is not an halachic imperative. It is perhaps a hashkafic uh, position, a, uh, a philosophical point of view, but it is not a, uh, necessarily the only approach to such matters. And we see that Rav Haigon was not of this view, even though he himself, as far as we know, did not make this bracha. And he says that this is not the practice in the yeshivot in Bavel, and the yeshivot of Bavel were, for Rav Haigaon, the epitome of uh, correct Torah practice. Nevertheless, he says, if a person wishes to make this bracha, there is no uh, reason why he should not do so. In other words, he saw this bracha as something optional, not uh, an absolute requirement, and not something that is forbidden to do, because there is no basis to claim that it is forbidden to do so. Uh, he saw this as something optional, which the Jews of Bavel chose not to do, and the Jews of Eretz Yisrael decided to follow. And therefore, the answer to that question that you ask, is it an obligation, is it, uh, is it um, permitted to do so, or is it forbidden to do so? The answer is that it is permitted to do so, certainly, and according to the uh, Torah and the practice and the minhagim of the Jews of Eretz Yisrael and the Tanaim and the Amoraim of Eretz Yisrael, like uh, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yudah Nasi, and Rabbi Hanan and Rabbi Lakish, etc., etc., this, this was in fact their daily practice, and in their view it was uh, very correct and, and an obligation to do so. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message, and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.